Welcome to Gemara Markings. Today's shiur is Yuma Dafnun Ches. We begin today's shiur ten lines from the top of Dafnun Ches. The Gemara quotes the Mishnah Nosan Es Hamole Berekon. We are dealing with the Matnos Dam, the blood applications that are taking place toward the end of the uh, Heichal blood, blood applications. And the Mishnah uh, describes he pours the full uh, receptacle into the empty one. That's a, an explanation that is in truth based on the Hemshich of the Gemara. However, in the meantime, if we look at the Mishnah literally, it says he places the mole, the full one, into an empty one. Does that possibly mean he puts one vessel into the other vessel and then does the blood applications? So that is what the Gemara will be discussing. So we turn before the Gemara itself, we look at the side where we have a mivne, a structural note, and you'll see a bow tie shape, and we've indicated this are, these are she'elos, these bow ties represent questions, Shamashutov Bainam, the common denominator between the questions that appear in the bow ties. Shehiniach Dovor Besocha Mizrok, he puts something in the uh, receptacle that's designed for receiving the blood. The Kibel Es Adam, and with the blood receptacle, in that fashion, he then receives the blood from the animal that's being slaughtered. So we uh, turn to the Gemara. Bo mine romi bar chamo me rav chista. Hiniach mizrok besoch mizrok the kibel boy asadam. Imagine someone takes two receptacles, one and places one in the other, and holding it like that, uh, uh, receives the blood at the point of the slaughtering. Mahu is this? What is the din regarding this? Min bemino chotzeitz oy eino chotzeitz. Min bemino means two substances, two items of like substance. So if we have two vessels, they're both made of the same substance, two uh, mizrakos, two blood-receiving receptacles. Does that create a chatzitza? Chatzitza is an interposition, a something that's blocking. In other words, ideally, blood, as it's being received, it should land directly into the receiving vessel without any... Uh, anything blocking it. In other words, if you were to, let's say, have a uh, blood receiving receptacle and then line it with uh, with aluminum foil or line it with paper or leaves or some foreign substance, so that would be considered a chatzitza, an interposition. The blood is supposed to land directly into the vessel. However, let us say that you put one vessel within the other. So, being that there's, that's called min bamino. Min is a type of substance that is the same type as the other substance. So, does that present a problem uh, as, let's say, aluminum foil would have represented or not? Omar le teni suha. So, as we go on in the Gemara, you'll notice triangles that appear in different directions. So, these uh, represent uh, attempts to resolve the question, but with different conclusions. Uh, we should have we should note on the side that we are that that this is the title of the sugya hayim min bamino chotzeitz, and the triangles, as you can see, represent a nisoyon lehochiach, uh, with the triangle facing upwards. It's an attempt to show the eino chotzeitz. It does not present a problem of chatzitza. The inverted triangle will try to demonstrate the conclusion the Gemara will try to draw will be the opposite, that it is Chotzeitz. So let us turn back to the Gemara, the triangle, Timisuha. Let us conclude the, uh, the uh, question uh, with the following answer. Nosan es hamole berekon. Our Mishnah said that he places the full vessel, he places the full one into the empty one. My love, what does that mean? Hoshiv Mizrak Mali Lusok Lusok Mizrak Rekon. That he placed the, uh, the vessel that was full of blood into another vessel that uh, was empty. So we would see from that that that's an acceptable way to conduct the sacrificial service, having one vessel within the other. And Min Bamino Eno 
The Gemara says, Loi, that's not the explanation of the Mishnah. But rather, it's as we said in our introductory remarks, the Mishnah really meant, Ira Mizrak Molei Lesoich Mizrak Reikon. That he was pouring the blood from a from a, the vessel that was full into an empty one. And that was in attempt to mix the blood together. He was mixing the cow blood with the goat blood, as we have learned in our previous Shiurim. And Rashi explains this as well on the second narrow line, after he had poured the cow blood into the uh, goat blood, he would then pour back the vessel that is now full into the uh, emptied vessel to create a, a thorough mixture. So as far as the Mishnah is concerned, it doesn't serve as a source of concluding the issue of Min Bemino because the Mishnah was talking about something else, pouring of blood back and forth. The Gemara asks, if that's the explanation you are giving for the Mishnah, but Hatanale Resha, did the Resha not already spell that out? Ira Dam Hapar Lusoyach Dam Hasoyer. So what would the meaning of this quote of Nosan Es Amole Berekon mean if we already spoke about the pouring of blood from one vessel into the other? The Gemara answers, there's no contradiction or even any redundancy. The pouring back and forth that the Mishnah describes is Kidei La'arvan Yofe Yofe. It's an attempt to mix them thoroughly well. So once again, our question remains, what is the din of Mizrak Besoch Mizrak for Kabolas Hadam? And trying to prove that or resolve that question from our Mishnah is of no value because our Mishnah is not talking about one vessel into the other. The Gemara continues, Toshma, and as we said, we have an inverted triangle, which will then lead us to think that one vessel within the other would be a problem of Chatzitza. What does the source say? Hoya oimed al gabi kli, oi al gabi regel chaveroi. Puzzle maybe a word of introduction, and that is is that uh, when one is doing service in the base of Mikdash, one is without any uh, footwear, he's barefoot on the floor, and that's what is expected. Uh, otherwise, if someone is standing on something, so he is uh, guilty of doing the avoda with a chatzitza. The foot has to be, the coin's foot has to be directly on the stone floor of the uh, azorah. So this source says he was standing on a vessel or he was standing on his friend's foot. And this is what we want to emphasize, the regel chavero. That would be the case of min bamino, uh, the Kohen's foot on another foot, foot on foot. And yet it says it's unfit. The, the avoda is, is posel. So that would show that min bamino is chotzeitz. The more says that is not... Uh, a good parallel to our case, shiny regel. The case of a foot is different. The lomotzi mevatel le. Uh, a person cannot uh, nullify his friend's foot. Rashi says the lo mevatel le chavero es ragloi ad shiigma avodoso. The uh, fellow whose foot is directly on the ground does not nullify his foot until the avoda is finished. So, as far as foot is concerned, so it would be a chatzitza, but that doesn't shed light on the issue of a vessel. A vessel uh, could be, in your mind's eye, nullified to the other vessel, making it as if it's not there. And hence, it would not be a chatzitza. Iko di Amri, another version, hochi boi mine. Another version is derech sherus bekach or ein derech sherus bekach. With uh, when you have a mizrak betoch mizrak of uh, two vessels, one within the other, is that considered a, the normal form of service? Sherus means service. Service in the base hamigdash is it normal or not? Toshma the tana the bei Rabbi Shmuel. So we try to resolve the question by the following source. Es kol kli hashoris asher yisos asher yisosu bam bakidish. The that this pasuk says in Bamidbar, 
Perik Dalid Posuk Yud Beis, it says on all the vessels as Kol Kleashores, and the uh, plural expression of Kol Kleashores gives the impression that we're talking about two vessels. And you have two vessels, as the source continues to say, Shnei Kalim V'Sherus Achas, two vessels in one service. So from this source, it would be seem to say that that's considered a legitimate form of service. The Gemara continues with another question. Bo minei rami bar chamo mei rav chista. You notice that we've double underlined the name rav chista, indicating, showing that he is the one that has been presented with these questions, as we saw before as well. So here in this question, we have a, a title uh, heading on the side, the Nosei Min B'She'eno Mino, Ha'im Chotzeitz. What about unlike substances? Would that present a Chatzitza problem or not? And of course, we spoke before about, <coughs> about um, tin foil or aluminum foil. That is an extreme case, because here we're going to see that the uh, unlike substance that's lining the vessel happens to be something that can be penetrated and maybe as a result of the absorption and penetration uh, it doesn't present a problem so we continue uh, with the Gemara uh, Rami Bahama asks if Rav Sisa Hiniach Siv Besoich HaMizrak V'kibel Boy Es Hadam Mahu now a word about Siv if we look in the Rashi, Siv HaGodel Soviv HaDekel. It's a type of network of, of uh, tree growth that grows around the trunk of a palm tree. And it wraps around the palm tree. If you have ever been exposed to a palm tree and you uh, notice within the outer bark, you'll find this uh, screen-like network of, of growth and it's uh, sieve. In fact, in English, there is a word uh, that is, is, sounds just like that. S i e v e, a sieve, which is used for separating uh, flour from debris. Let's say, so that is what this plant uh, um, growth looks like. So it's Rashi continues. Sieve hagodol sofi fadach benichra cholov sofi kemin lovin bekefanim. The sovik is Adam, it's soft, it will absorb the blood of Adam, and the blood will go through this networking. If you line the vessel with the networking, the blood anyway will penetrate it and, and end up touching the inside lining of the vessel itself. And that's the Gemara's question Is this a Chatzitza? Now, once again, if you had taken some aluminum foil and lined a base Hamigdash vessel with that, so that would be uh, something that would, would, would clearly be a chatzitza because the the uh, blood that fills the vessel will not have direct contact with the vessel. But in this case, the sieve is a, as we said, is a screen-like network of plant substance, and hence, even if you line the vessel with this material, the blood has contact with the vessel. And let's read it in the Gemara. If you lined the vessel with this network, the sieve substance, would that be a chatzitza? Min b'she'eno mino chotzeitz, o eno chotzeitz. It's uh, an unlike substance. Eno mino, it's a plant where the plant networking is not the metallic substance of the kli. So it's an unlike substance. Does it present a chatzitza, an interposition problem, or not? And the analysis, though, continues. Kevon de mechalchel It since it penetrates, namely the blood penetrates the networking and does, re, does in fact touch the vessel, so maybe it's not a problem. O dilma lo yishna, or maybe that doesn't make a difference, and it is a chatzitza. Omar le. So Rav Chista responds, and you'll note we have a number one, and then the next line you see a squiggle underline Iko de Amri, two different ways that Rav Chista responds. So number one, Tanina. Zoilef v'hoilech 
עד שמגיע לספוג. This is a very, very terse quote. Hence, we look at the Rashi, and he gives us the background. Zole v'holech v'chulei. Reish of the Masis and Hochi. The uh, early uh, section of this Tanaic source is as follows. It comes from Maseches Pora, the Masech that deals with Pora Adumo, the ash from the red heifer that's mixed with water, and the ash is added to water that's drawn in a vessel, and the source reads as follows, and we're reading in the Rashi, HaMekadish Beshokes, for the Sfog Lesocho. This is a, a Shokes is a, a vessel that contains the water, and he's going to add ash to the water, and in the bottom of the vessel there is a Sfog. The word Sfog looks, if you have a good imagination, it's, it looks a little bit like the English word sponge. The N is missing, the Nun is missing, but Sfog is, in fact, sponge material. So there was sponge material in this vessel. Mayim Shebesfog Psulim. The water that's in the sponge is unfit for the Poraduma service, or the Poraduma ritual. Kate said, Yase, so what should a person do? So that if, if you, let us say, drew water for Poraduma purposes, uh, using a vessel that contained a sponge in it. So you have a vessel that's filled with water that you need for Paraduma. And the water that's in the sponge is not uh, acceptable. And you can't squeeze out the sponge and then use that water for Paraduma purification purposes. So the source says, what do you do? Zolech, Zolef Vaholech means you pour, gradually pour out the water from the vessel that has the water in it with the sponge. However, you pour out the water slowly, until you get to the where the sponge is. And in other words, all the the uh, free water is poured out, and you're left with a vessel containing a sponge that's absorbed with water. Shokis he even chalula al hamayon the. Shokis is a hollowed stone at the edge of a of a stream of a live spring. And the water that we're interested in using for the paraduma enters it through a hole in the side of this vessel. Umashkin ba behemos umekachin ba eifer chatos lusoch mayim chayim vhi hakli. And as we said before, the afer chatos, the ash of the red heifer, is added to this water, and it is the vessel. Mayim shebesfog psulim, the water in the sponge is not acceptable. The chayim el keli boinon. That's a quote from the pasuk. Mayim chayim el keli. You need to have uh, live spring water, fresh uh, spring water that, that that ends up directly in the vessel. Um, and that's what the Gemara says. Shuhamayim no yigim bekli. We want the water that's drawn from the spring to touch the vessel. Kaitzer also. So what should he do? Kishibo lito esamayim v'lino mitzluches shveres. When he's coming to uh, uh, take the water and put them in the tzluches, which is a, another receptacle, uh, or shvoferes zolef the gomer es kol amayim asher ba shokes ad. She Magia Lusfog. He pours out the water from the Shokes, the original vessel, into these other vessels until he gets to the sponge. And the word Zolef is Shofech Ad Hamatsui. Uh, you spill out until that which is absorbed in the sponge. Almosfog. Now here is the key thing. So we, up till now, we discussed. We have water of the uh, that's drawn from a live spring, and it's drawn into a vessel, and the vessel has a sponge in it. Notice that on the one hand we have a requirement that the water touches the vessel directly. On the other hand, you have the sponge in there. But we saw that the water was acceptable. All that was required is that you pour water out from the uh, original vessel and up till the point of the sponge don't use the water that was absorbed in the sponge itself 
but the rest of the water is okay. Alma svog lo chayetz v'lo posil elo hanivloim b'socho. The sponge doesn't represent an interposition. The, again, we're sounding a little repetitious, but we mentioned earlier that the water has to touch the vessel directly. Okay, so what, so what? There was a sponge in there, but the sponge is highly absorbent, and the water penetrates the sponge and touches the vessel. All that we object to is using the water that's absorbed in the sponge itself. The huadin lasiv, and the same would apply to the vessel lined with the sieve material mentioned before. So what are we saying? We're using the water sponge example as an analogy to the blood sieve lined vessel. That is what uh, Rav Chistos, uh, response is. The Gemara, though, continues, second line from the bottom, and rejects this. Shiny Maya, the Klishi, Mayim, water, water vis-a-vis the sponge is different than the case of the blood with the sieve. Water is a very um, liquidy, uh, with little viscosity associated with it. Hence, it penetrates, it easily penetrates the sponge. Not so in the case of the blood, which is a thicker substance. So the uh, level of contact with the blood in a vessel lined with a foreign substance is not the same level of contact as water lined in a, in a vessel that has in it a sponge. Ika the Amri, another of another version. Hachi poshat lei. Thusly, Rav Chista, uh, answered. Bedam kosher, a vessel that was lined with sieve and it was used to receive the blood, that's okay. However, the koimetz posel. Koimetz is a handful of a meal offering, and that's after drawn or uh, taken from the bowl containing the the meal, the, the uh, entire meal offering, a handful is removed, let's say a handful of flour, and is then placed in a second service vessel. The halacha requires that the flour from the meal offering, when placed in, when the handful of it is placed in the second service vessel, the flour lands directly into a vessel. And if that second vessel happens to be lined with sieve, that will be unfit. And the uh, the difference is quite obvious. The the blood relative to flour, the blood is a liquid. It's it will penetrate and come into contact with the vessel, as opposed to a dry powder substance. If you if the vessel is lined with a foreign substance, even if it happens to be something like a sieve, so there you will have the chatzitza problem. We now continue on to Amit Beis with a new Mishnah, and we're continuing with the uh, uh, blood applications to the golden altar uh, after the Kohen Gadol finished the uh, applications in the Kodesh HaKadoshim and in the uh, and on the Parochas in the Heichal he then uh, walks away from the Parochas he walks in an easterly direction uh, we also will say behind the Mizbeach and uh, we just saw in the previous Mishnah that in anticipation of the Mizbeach blood applications, he uh, mixes the cow blood with the goat blood. Of course, that was a machlokis tanoim, and our Mishnah represented the opinion that the bloods are mixed together in anticipation of the Mizbeach application. So we continue uh, with the Mishnah at the top of Omid Beis, Nun Ches Omid Beis, V'yotza El HaMizbeach Shilifnei Hashem. That's a posuk, posuk Yud Ches, in Vayikro Tezayin. Ze Mizbeach Hazov. The reference to uh, the Mizbeach that's Lifnei Hashem, that is the internal, the golden altar used for offering the daily incense. The outside altar, which is much more commonly used and in fact the outside courtyard altar the the large mizbeach is uh, associated most often with blood applications hence it's important in the case of Yom Kippur we're dealing with the unusual uh, service of blood application on the inside internal 
golden altar. And that's described as Lefne Hashem. The, the courtyard, large uh, sacrificial mizbeach would not be described using the term Lefne Hashem. Lefne Hashem means in front of the Almighty, meaning the more internal that you get, the more inside the Hecha, which is, which is right next to the Kedosh HaKadoshim, that could be described as Lefne Hashem. The Mishnah continues, Hizchil Mechate V'yoreid. Mechate is, the, is a word that has to do with the blood application. So he starts to apply the blood, Mechate V'yoreid, and he applies it in a descending fashion. That is just a, a very superficial um, explanation, but we look into the Rashi at the top. Hizchil Mechate V'yoreid. This Tana is of the opinion, and Rashi now gets into a topic that the Gemara will deal with at length, that Hakofa Beregel, Kidoma Begemora. Hakofa means the, uh, the circumlocution, walking around the Mizbeach, uh, is, is the Hakofa, the uh, going around the Mizbeach. In other words, the blood had to be applied on the four corners of this Mizbeach. This Mizbeach, by the way, was very small. It measured only an amo uh, by an amo, and a half a meter by half a meter. It's a, it's a distance that you could conceivably reach across and, and, and reach all sides of it. However, there is an opinion, and that's what Rashi is reflecting now, that the Kohen Godot will be walking around this rather small altar, and each blood application was done at the corner that he was facing at that moment. <coughs> the somuch lo, the each corner that was in front of him and the one next to it. Now, blood, as you can as you can easily realize, is a liquid, and he is essentially dipping his fingers into this bowl that holds the blood and it's important to avoid soiling his garment or staining his garment with the blood. In order to accomplish the blood application, smearing it along the sides or the the edges, the corners of the Mizbeach, it's important for his hand movement to be milamalo lamata, a downward movement. In other words, he would dip his fingers into the bowl, getting uh, the blood onto his fingers, and then smearing it along the edge of the mezbeach, moving his fingers from above downwards. Kihechi de lo nisvasi money. So as to avoid his money, money means his clothing, nisvasi means getting stained with the blood. Shamezbeach kavu amosayim, the mezbeach itself was two amos tall, approximately a meter in height. The e efshir letzadeh roshe etz ba'oisov Lemato, the loses hamatono bakeren shelemato lemala, and he can't uh, invert his fingers, uh, his fingertips facing downwards, and apply the blood at the corner, moving from down upwards. The alkochoi roshes boys of lemala, and uh, he has to have his fingertips facing upwards. And when he uh, applies it with his finger opposite the or on the edge of the corner, the no saying matona aruka mishucha, and he uh, applies it in a in a uh, stretched out in a long stroke. Im moshech mi lamato lamalo if he uh, if he does this with his uh, fingertips facing upwards, but moving from below upwards, the dam that that's zav the hadam zav l'sech beis yad The just you have to try to picture all of this with the his fingers uh, fingertips are facing up, and it has blood, is liquid blood on it. If he were to move his fingers. In a, a, from a lower position upwards along the corner of the Mizbeach, so the blood will roll down his sleeve. And he has to, therefore, apply from above downwards. 
the Mishnah uses this expression, Mechati Bjorid, Mechati equals Loshon Yeridahi. It is a reference to going down. So we remember Menachas, as the Gemara Menachas says, No se oilo Mishati. In the context of the Gemara there, you can see that the word Mishati is in contrast to Oila, which means going up. Mishati means going down, descending. So we go back to our Mishnah. Mehechon hu maschil. From what exact point does he start the blood applications? So the Gemara answers, and the Gemara will give you the starting point and the progression. We have four corners to deal with. He starts Mikaren Mizrachis Tsvainis. Next, Tsvainis Marovis. The Mizrachis Tsvainis is northeastern corner. Tsvonis Marovis northwestern. Marovis Dromis southwestern. Dromis Mizrachis, Mizrachis southeastern. We have on the side of our Gemara a, an aerial view of the Heichal. Uh, the directions are also on this picture, the top of the picture. This aerial view no, is, notes Marov, which is west. The bottom, you can see, you have Mizrach is noted, east. So, according to what we saw in the Mishnah, he's going to start from the northeastern corner. So you find east and you find the north which is to the right hand side that's where he'll start that's northeast the next stop we said was northwest which would be a movement back to the direction of the Poroches and the Kodesh Agadoshim. now that note is important he starts at a far away point that was we call the the uh, northeastern corner and then he moves back toward the parochas. He, by the way, before this he was close to the parochas and he walked away. Uh, he walked in back of the mizbeach, so to speak, and then moves from this north eastern point. He goes northwest, going back toward the kodesh <coughs> We're going to get back to this issue later. The mission continues. Mokom shumaschil bechatos al mizbeach achitzon. The beginning point when it comes to blood applications of a korban chatos on the outside mizbeach. Where does he begin on the outside mizbeach? So it happens to be that he begins in the southeastern corner of the uh, mizbeach achitzon. And uh, that uh, that beginning point, southeastern corner of the Mizbech Chitzon, happens to be Misham Hoyagoymer al Mizbech Apnimi. When it comes to the in, inside, the internal Mizbech, that is his ending point. So if you look at the the uh, four corners that were just mentioned, the uh, the last one. The fourth corner uh, in the Mishnah was southeast. The uh, Mishnah continues. Rabbi Lezer Omer ben Mekoyme Hoya Oymed. Rabbi Lezer doesn't have him walking around the golden altar. He stands in one spot, Umechate, and uh, does the blood application. The Alkulon Hoya Noisein Nila Mato Lamalo, with regard to three of the four corners, he in fact does an upward stroke from below upwards, Chutz Mizusha Hoysa Lafanov, with the exception of the corner in front of which he is standing, Shoya Noisein Nila Malo Lamato. There, he had to do a downward stroke. If we look at Rashi, across from here, Rashi says, He didn't walk around the Mizbech by foot. The whole size of the, of the, the whole thing, the whole Mizbech was a mere Amo by an Amo, square Amo. And since the other three corners are not next to him, He can do an upward motion without 
since his hand is extended, so the fear of the uh, blood dripping down his sleeve doesn't exist. So he can do an upward motion. The next Rashi says, Chutz Mizu Shehu Oimei Etzlo, with the exception of the corner of, uh, next to which he is standing, Shehi Lefonov, Shehi Efshelo Litzadei Roshetz Boso Vlamato. In such a case, he can't uh, position his fingers in a, with the tips facing downwards. Elo Lamalo, they are facing upwards in that case. So, Limshech Hamatona Mi Lamalo Lamato. There, he'll have to uh, do the downward stroke she'im moshcha milamata lamalo adam zav l'soich beis yad kutanto since it's uh, close to where he is and his fingertips are facing upwards he would have to um, if, if he did the the upward movement the blood would would uh, uh, trip back to his sleeve of his kasoinus of his coin uh, godel garment we continue in the in the Mishnah. Hizo al taharoi shel mizbech sheva pomim. That means after after he finished the corner applications, he then hizo uh, did a sprinkling of the blood on the tiharo. Now the word tiharo, the Gemara will explain, uh, and Rashi doesn't reveal its meaning right now, but we'll play along with that and not reveal it either. So he does the seven uh, uh, seven sprinklings on the tihar of the mizbeach ushiore hadam al yeshoifech al yesoid ma rovi shel mizbeach achitzon, and whatever re- uh, remaining blood there was, it would be poured on the base of the external, the courtyard mizbeach, on what side? On the western side of the external mizbeach. And again, you can use the diagram that we have. You can see it's an aerial view, as we said. So you see the courtyard mizbeach, the external mizbeach, with the ramp leading up to it, and the western uh, base is marked on the diagram where the shirayim apnimim would be poured. The Mishnah continues v'shel mizbeach achitzon when dealing with other t- sacrifices. The, generally speaking, the remnant blood, the remaining blood after external. Uh, as sacrificial blood applications were performed whatever remnant blood there was then that was poured on the southern base of the Mizbeach and you can see on the diagram uh, there, there's a note Shirayim Hach the Chitsonian it could be noted it, it's, you can see this on the diagram that the base, the Yesoid of the external Mizbeach did not run around the Mizbeach completely. <coughs> there was just an Amo on the southern side and the western and northern sides had a complete um, base and on the eastern side one more Amo uh, around it as you can see. Continuing in the Mishnah Elu vi Elu, the internal blood from the Yom Kippur sacrifices and the external blood of other korbonas in general misarvin ba'amo the blood would flow into the, the, the ditch that carried uh, liquids out of the azora and so they would mix in the amo in that ditch the yoitzin lenach kidron and flow out into the kidron valley which was outside the temple mount vinim korin leganonim lezevel and the uh, Farmers, Ganonim people who raised vegetables, who lived out there, who had uh, gardens and fields out there, would benefit from this blood, and they would pay for it. And Zevel is fertilizer, umoalin bohen. That means that if they don't pay for it, they would be guilty of a rabbinic level of meila. And this too will be the matter of discussion in the Gemara. As we turn now to the beginning of the Gemara, we have a topic heading on the side, Matnos Dam Al Mizbech Hazov Behechal. The Gemara will get into the details of the blood applications on the golden altar in the Hechal. Tonu Rabonan, Viyotso El Hamizbech, Ma Tamud Lomar. The Postuk says, and he goes out uh, toward the Mizbech, or outside of the Mizbech. 
What does that mean? Since we have found regarding other uh, types of sacrifices whose blood is sprinkled in the Heichal. Now that's not common, but there are specific uh, uh, sacrifices, and we've made reference to them in the in some previous Gemaras, uh, whose blood is sprinkled in the Heichal. And the uh, the, the uh, Brisa mentions Lefisha Motzin, but Parah Baal Kol Mitzvis. That's a cow offering in the event that the uh, high court, the Sanhedrin, errs in a legal ruling. So a special korban is brought that's also known as Parhelim Dover Shel Tzibor. Shekayin oimeit chutzle mezbeach umaze al haporoches b'shaw shumaze that the Kohen, when he sprinkles on the uh, toward the direction of the curtain, in the case of the Parhelon Dov do you know where he's standing? He is standing east of the golden altar in the Heichal. So once again, when it comes to the Parhelon Dov Sibor, and that is a type of sacrifice that necessitates internal blood sprinklings, the blood is sprinkled in the direction of the Porochas, but where is the Kohen standing when he does that? He's standing east of the golden altar. So that the altar, in effect, is between him, the Kohen, and the curtain. Yochel af zekain, is that the case here as well in the Yom Kippur service? And of course, the Pusik that opened up this source, the Yotzel Mazbech, was talking about the Yom Kippur service. And in the Yom Kippur service, there's also blood applications uh, that are done toward the Poroches, Talmud Lomar. So the Pesach tells us the Yotzel Mizbeach. He then, after he does the Poroches applications, only then does he walk outside of the Golden Altar, meaning east of the Golden Altar. So where was he standing when he was doing the applications toward the Poroches on Yom Kippur? So Yom Kippur, in contrast with the Par Habal Kol Mitzvah, or Par Helam Dover Shlitzibor, in the case of Yom Kippur, when it came to the Poroches application, nothing was between the Kohen and the Poroches. Tanya Idoch. We quote another Tanaic source with op- which opens uh, with a posuk from Vayikra, Perak Dalid, Posuk Zion. And on the side of the Gemara, we have this quoted. Uh, this posuk is coming from the Par Kohen Moshiach. That's a special cow offering in the event that a Kohen Godel errs in a legal ruling. And the posuk says, Venosan HaKohen in Par. Alkarnos Mizbach Keturis Asamim Lufne Hashem Asherboil Moyed, Ves Kol Hadam Yishpoich El Yisoid Mizbach Oil Asher Pesach Oil Moyed. So in this post, you see the term Lufne Hashem. Ma, the Gemara uh, continues, Ma Talmud Lomar. What is the significance of Lufne Hashem? Omar of Nechemia. We found in the Yom Kippur cow and goat offerings, the coin stands within, from the inside of the Mizbeach. Now, inside means west of, west of the Mizbeach, namely nothing between him and the curtain, and then he sprinkles in the direction of the Poroches curtain uh, without anything between him, without the Mizbeach being there. The Mizbeach is in back of the Kohen at that point on Yom Kippur. Yochel Afzeh is Afzeh King. Is that so also with the Par Kohen Moshiach, which is the sacrifice brought in the event that a Kohen Godel renders an incorrect legal ruling? Talmud Loimar. So the Posuk says. In, with regard to the Par Kohen Moshiach in Perak Dalid of Vayikra, Mizbach Ketoros Asamim Lefnei Hashem Asher Ba'oyel Moyed. And we darshan, Mizbeach Lefnei Hashem, the Mizbeach is 
in front of the Almighty, so to speak, means that it's the Mizbech which is closer to the Kodesh HaKadoshim, uh, closer to the Parochis, on, on the other side of which was the Oron, the Kodesh HaKadoshim. The Ein Koyen Lithne Hashem, the Kohen is not there. The Kohen is west, is east of the Mizbech. Ha Ketzad, so how is it in the case of the Par Kohen Moshiach? Oy made Chutz La Mizbech Umaze. He stands on the outside of the Mizbech, meaning he stands east of the Mizbech, with the Mizbech between him and the Parochas, and in that fashion, he does the blood applications toward the Parochas. Once again, in the case of the Par Kohen Moshiach. So all in all, to summarize, it's a very simple point, very simple difference. When it comes to the Yom Kippur Parochas applications, the Kohen is standing west of the golden altar, namely nothing between Kohen, Godol, and the Parochas. When it comes to Parah Boa Mitzvah, or the Par Kohen Moshiach, these other kinds of sacrifices, non-Yom Kippur sacrifices, who happen to have in, uh, inside internal blood applications, in that case, the Mizbeach is standing between the Kohen and the Poroches. Hishil mechate viore v'chule. That is a quote from the Mishnah. Tonu Rabbanan. Hishil mechate viore. So the Mishnah mentioned he starts a blood application in a uh, downward stroke on the corner of the altar. Mehechon humas choyamas. From where did he begin? Mikaren mizrochis droimis. Now note, by the way, that this. Uh, this opinion, in this source, by the way, there are two opinions, this beginning point is different than the beginning point you saw in the Mishnah. In the Mishnah, on the <coughs> second line from the top, it said, Maschil Mikarim Mizrochus Foynus, northeast. This has the him beginning, Mizrochus Droimus, southeastern corner. They have in common that he's starting from the eastern edge of the Mizbeach. The far, the further away side of the mizbeach. That is a common point. However, this opinion has him starting from the southeastern corner, and we'll see in the, in the as the source goes on. Rabbi Yosei will tell you he starts from the northeastern corner, like we saw in the Mishnah. In the meantime, though, let's start at the southeastern. Uh, corner. And by the way, as you learn these Gemars, you can keep your finger uh, at the same time on the diagram. So he starts at the southeastern corner. Next stop, Droimis Maravis, southwestern corner. He's now moving toward the Kodesh Agos and toward the Polochas. Maravis Svenis, northwestern. And he's uh, the, that's the third corner is northwest, and Tzfonis Mizrachis, last stop, northeast. Divrei Rabbi Akiva. That is Rabbi Akiva's approach. So that, in, according to Rabbi Akiva, uh, as the Kohen Gadol is facing the Mizbeach, he, in effect, is moving in a, we'll call it a left or counterclockwise, uh, or actually clockwise motion. But as he's facing the Mizbeach, he's moving, we'll, we'll say he's moving left. It's like his left hand is guiding him around. Rabbi Yoshi Aglili, Omer, he starts Mikarin Mizrachus Tzfonis. He starts from the northeastern corner. Tzfonis Maravis, the next stop is northwest. Here he's going counterclockwise. He's, and as he's facing the Mizbeach, so his right hand would be guiding him around. So we call that a right motion. <clears throat> um, the next, the third stop, Maravas Droimus, south west, and Droimus Mizrachus, south east. Mokoim Shurabiosi Aglili Maschil. So where did he begin? He started from Mizrachus Furnace. That means northeast. Rabiosi Aglili began at northeast. Shom Rebbe Akiva Posek. Northeast is the last stop for Rebbe Akiva. And all of this is very clear if you are working along with the diagram. 
Mokom Shabbi Kiva Masfil, Shom Rabbi Yossi Aglini Posek. Rabbi Akiva's beginning point, and where was that? Southeast. Southeast, Rabbi Akiva's beginning point was, in fact, Rabbi Yossi Haglili's ending point. The Kule Alma Miha. Everyone, however, agrees. And as when you look at Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Yossi Haglili, they both agree. Bahu Keren de Poga Beresha Loi Ovid. When he finished, but when he finished the Kodesh Hagadoshim, he did the Poroches sprinklings. <clears throat> Which edge of the Mizbech is closest to the Kohen Gadol when he's doing the Poroches sprinklings? Remember, on Yom Kippur, when he's doing the Poroches applications, there's nothing between the Kohen and the Poroches. We might say that the Mizbech was in back of the Kohen Gadol. So which edge of the Mizbech was closest to him at that point? The western edge. Both Rabbi Akifa and Rabbi Yosilili agree that the beginning application on the altar, of the blood application on the golden altar, <coughs> both agree they don't, there's no western representation as far as the first application is concerned. Rabbi Akiva has him starting southeast. And Rabbi Yosei Gwili has him starting south or northeast. But both of them, you'll notice there's east. No west as far as beginning point. Just to review, Rabbi Kiva has him starting southeast. Rabbi Yosei Gwili has him starting northeast. My timer, why is that? Omar Shmuel, the Omar Kro. Shmuel says, based on the Posuk. It says, V'yotza el hamizbech. And we learn from that, Ad denofik mikulei mizbech. He's got to leave the mizbech. Before he starts blood applications on the mizbech, he's got to leave it. Well, what does that mean? So he's got to walk easterly toward the, uh, toward the uh, exit point of the heichal. So he walks easterly. He's then walking leaving the Mizbeach behind him, so to speak, <clears throat> walking away from the Mizbeach, walking out of the Heichal. So that's the Yotzel and Mizbeach, that's what that implies. He's got to walk away from the Mizbeach. The Gemara asks, regarding Rebbe Akiva, and you'll notice this question is a long question. Well, the Rebbe Akiva, Rebbe Akiva, use the chart. It can, it's a little crowded, I know, but try to find where it says Rabbi Kiva Maschil. Rabbi Kiva has you starting from the southeastern corner of the golden altar. You are the Kohen Godel and you're facing the altar. Your next move is to hit the southwestern corner. In which direction are you moving? Well, you're moving in a in a uh, uh, your a left mo- movement, and in other words, as you're facing the back, you're following the direction of your left hand. The Gemara asks, "Ula Rebbe Akiva Nakif Derech Yemin." Why doesn't he follow a right movement? Right, follow his right hand, and the next stop would have been northeast. Not as Rebbe Akiva moves. He goes from southeast, then he get, get, he reaches southwest. That is a left move. Lema b'dorami bar Yecheskel Should we say that the machloikis between Rabbi Yosi Aglili and Rabbi Kiva is whether or not to accept Rami bar Yecheskel's rule? And before we go too much further. On the side of the Gemara, we have our Nosei Mivnehenim, where we feature a diamond. These are Hatzois, these are uh, suggestions. The uh, We're trying to explain the the Machlokis uh, Tanoim regarding the order of these corners 
upon which the blood is applied. So maybe the point of Machlokis between Rabbi Kiva, who has a moving left, and Rabbi Yisrael, who has a moving right, is whether or not to accept Rami by Yecheskel. The Yomar Rami by Yecheskel. He, uh, he, uh, he makes a point, and you'll notice that we have quotation marks. It, it takes about four lines for him to develop his point. Rami by Yecheskel describes a pool that held water in the courtyard of the Beis Hamikdash. It was known as the Yam Sha'asa Shlomo. Yam is a, for our purposes, a pool that was made by Shlomo Melech. And it was set upon 12 cow images, 12 cow statues. So you have a pool sitting on the back of the cows, 12 of them, three cows in each direction of. Uh, uh, north, south, east, and west. And how does the Pusik describe them? And here we're going to be focusing on order. So this, the uh, Romi Bar Cheskel tells us, Yam Shosh Shlomo, Oimei Al Shnei Moser Boker. This tank or this pool stood on the backs of twelve cows. Shloisha Poinim Tzona. Three cows were facing north. So if you, for example, are in the north right now, and you are facing the pool, so you're looking head on to three cows that are on the northern side of this pool. Ushlesh uponim yama. Yama means west. So you've gone from the north to the west. That movement, if you are on the northern side of this pool facing the north, in other words, you're basically facing south and you want to move west, what, in what direction are you moving if you're going to go westerly? You're going to be turning right. Next, you're now in the west facing the pool. And what's the next direction that's mentioned? Ushlesh Ponim Negbo. Negbo means south. So you were in the west, and now you're moving to the south. And you're going to face the pool on its southern side. And what's the next stop? You have no choice at this point. Ushlesh Ponim Mizracha. You were standing in the south facing the pool, and the fourth stop is in the Posuk is the east. Once again, you are continuing in a right movement. Vayom alehem milamalo, and the uh, this uh, pool was on their backs. The whole achoreim basop, and their posteriors were facing inside. Ha uh, lamadato. From this, you see shekopina shatapina all uh, uh, turns that you make when you have to make a turn. Lo you ella derech yamin. You should turn in a right direction. Uh, Lemizrach, the term Lemizrach we have in brackets because that is what was common, uh, even though that's not what is the, we're not saying that that is the rule, but it's, it was common when you, uh, uh, when you were uh, doing a blood application on the external uh, courtyard altar, you would uh, go up the ramp, that was, you would go up the ramp which was, which represented a a uh, journey from the southern edge of the Mizbeach up the ramp and you're walking northerly and the first uh, you would make a right turn when you reach the uh, ledge of the Mizbeach the Sobev you would make a right turn to uh, uh, apply the first blood application in a Korban Chatos what would the right turn be if you were going you were walking in a northerly direction, your right turn would be an easter an easterly turn. That's why the term the Mizroch appears, that's the common case. But the rule is that all turns that you make, you should make you should be turning in a right direction. 
So that's Rami Bar Yecheskel's rule. And of course, when we speak about right turn, so we're assuming right now we're talking about in the service of the base Hamigdash and blood applications, which is our topic. So Rami Bar Yecheskel learns from the positioning of the cows in the case of the Yam Sha'asa Shlomo that one is to make a right turn because those, that is the uh, fashion in which the directions were presented. More is laid, the Rami Bar Yecheskel would stand to reason then that Rav Yoisi Aglili, who started uh, south, uh, sorry, he started northeast, and as you were facing the Mizbeach, according to Rabbi Yossi Aglili, and you started northeast, in the northeastern corner, and your next application was northwest, you were moving right. So Rab Yossi Haglili would seem to accept Rami Bar Yecheskel, who more or less lay the Rami Bar Yecheskel, Rabbi Kiva, who had, had the claim starting southeast, and while facing the Mizbeach, and you're in the southeast, and your next stop was southwest, you were moving in a left direction. So it would stand to, that, to say that Rabbi Kiva does not hold by Rami Bar Yecheskel. The Gemara says, Lo, that's not the analysis of this Machlikas Tanoyim, the Kulei Alma Islu the Rami Bar Yecheskel. In principle, everyone accepts Rami Bar Yecheskel. But here there's an, over, an overriding consideration. Here, with regard to the golden altar corner, four corner blood application, the following is the basis of the Machlikas. Mor Savar Yalfinon. Pnim Michutz. Michutz means in the courtyard. In the courtyard, everyone agrees that you turn right. As we described before, you go up the ramp. Your first corner <coughs> will be the uh, southeastern corner of the Mizbeach, demanding a right turn at the top of the ramp. However, the question is, do I learn uh, principles of directions from that which takes place in the courtyard? So uh, at this stage in presenting the analysis, we're saying that itself is the point of controversy. That Rabbi Yosef really says, Yalfinon Pnim Michutz. I learn Pnim means inside, namely the Mizbech Azov, from Michutz, from that which we saw in the courtyard, which actually, even to be more accurate, maybe we should say, we saw that by the Yam She'osa Shlomo, the, which, that, that pool that stood in the courtyard. Umar Sovar, Rabbi Kiva says, I don't learn that which, uh, that which is described in the courtyard and have that refer to the inside, the internal Mizbeach. Uh, you can see that we have a bracketed section, and the note that accompanies this on the side, the starred note, Achreasograyim, after the brackets, which will take us to Nun Tes Omen Aleph, Hagemora Mamshicha Besidra Show Bemai Komifligi. The Gemara will, will come back to the series of suggestions of of uh, the series of explanations or suggested explanations of this machlokes tanaim, we we're offering different suggestions ba- uh, uh, to explain what are they arguing about. So our first suggestion was Rami Bar Yecheskel. Do you do you is there bichlal? Is there ever an inyan? Do you ever have to turn right? The second stage is basically yes. There's a general agreement you have to turn right, but that's when it comes to the courtyard of the base of Megiddo. But within the Heichal, that is not universally accepted. The note continues, the Soha Sograim and Gmor Mevareres, Lomer Bikiva, Bochar Dafke Beseder Azet. Okay, once Rabbi Kiva says that I'm not bound when it comes to the Heichal to that which takes place in Azora, so nevertheless, why does Rabbi Kiva choose specifically? the directions that he does choose. As far as Rabbi Kiva is concerned, it would have, all options should have been open. 
Why does he choose what he does? They let's now look at this in the brackets. Verbikiva. Nahi de lo Yolif Pnim because granted that he is not he doesn't learn Pnim, that which takes place inside by the golden altar from the outside from that which was described in the courtyard. Nevertheless, e boy hochinavid, e boy hochinavid. If he wanted to, he could do this way, he could do that way. The question simply is, why does he choose what he says? Rabbi Akiva has him starting from southeast, and he said specifically, southwest is the next stop. Why? Omar loch Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva answers, Medina, in truth, Bahu Karen de Poga Beresha. Bahu Ovid Beresha. In in principle, the first corner that he encounters is the first one upon which the blood application should take place. Now, as far as what what is the first corner? Well, if you make the assumption that the first corner uh is the southwestern corner and why would that be? So if you look on the diagram you'll notice there was a double poroches and of course this is all the subject of a machlokis tanoyim but let's make the assumption right now that according to Rebekiva there was a double uh, poroches and the uh, opening into the hecha was on the southern uh, along the southern wall and you can see that this is an aerial view you can see that in the diagram so when he was leaving the Kodesh HaKadosh and entering the uh, the Heichal portion he was entering the Heichal at the southern edge the corner of the Mizbech closest to him at that point uh, would have been the southwestern corner that corner is the one upon which the first blood application should have taken place. It's true that it doesn't. We had a posik before, but that, technically speaking, should have been the first corner. And why should that have been the first corner? The Gemara continues three lines from the bottom. The Omar Reish Lokish, Ein Mavirin Al Hamitzvos. One is not to pass over the chance to do a mitzvah. So if if he's going to be doing Mizbah blood applications, he should do it at the first moment, the first opportunity, and that would be that, that particular corner. So why does he not do it over there? Because the Torah demanded of him the Yotzel and Mizbah. He's got to leave the Mizbah. He's got to go east of the Mizbah. Adinofik means until he leaves Mikulim, the entire Mizbah. So that positions him where? East of the Mizbeach. <clears throat> well, if, he, if he's then moved away from that first corner, so the, 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 the next best choice, so to speak, it, it's of course it is the best choice because the Pusik says the Otzel Mizbeach, so that places him at the southeastern corner. So he has to start at the southeastern corner. The cave and the Karen. So now that he's he's a, he's a fulfilled the Vyotel Mizbech requirement and, and done the southeastern corner, Hadar Osila Hu Karen the Ischai of the Mesabration. Now he goes back to the corner that he should have done the first application, namely southwest. And uh, as a result of these considerations. He has to be moving in the left direction. Namely, he starts southeast, and he's facing the Mizbech when he's doing this. He follows his left hand, and the next corner that he would reach is the southwestern corner. And that corner, why there? Because that is the that really was the first corner that he should have applied the blood based on Reb Shlokish's concept of Ein Mavir Nala Mitzvah. Over here, though, there was a specific requirement of the Yotza Elamis Beach, so he accomplishes the Vyotza Mizbeach south. At south. That puts him at southeast, and then he goes back to the Ein Mavir and Alamitzvah's corner southwest, which 
in the final analysis is a left movement. We continue at the top of Nun Tesom and Aleph. The Iboyasema, another suggestion, another approach is Is Virolon Hakofa Beregel. If you would hold that you uh, walk around the Mizbeach, the Kuliyama Lopligi, the Alfinon Pnim Michutz, then everyone would agree that I learned the Hechal from that which we described in the Azorah. And as such, everyone would agree that you walked in a right direction. But here, this is the very point of controversy. Rabbi Kiva holds that the, the um, uh, movement around the Mizbeach was not by walking, but it was by uh, stretching out your arm. The Kohen Gadol would stretch out his arm, reaching the four corners. And hence, he said, move in a right direction. Another approach is the Kule Alma Hakofa Biyad. Everyone will agree that, there, in, so everyone meaning Rabbi Yosei and Rabbi Kiva will both agree that he is going to uh, go around the Mizbech, but only as far as his arm is concerned, no walking around. The Hacha and here the machlokis is as follows more so yad me regel Rabbi Yossi would say that I'm going to learn the idea of an arm movement around from the way from the way we would have practiced had I been required to walk around and that would be in a right direction. And Rabbi Kiva will say, I don't learn the way I move my arm from the way I would have had I walked around. The Gemara asks, the Sava Rabbi Yossi Aglili Hakofa Biyad? Can you say, as we just said now, that everyone will agree that Hakafa is beyond including Rabbi Yossi Aglili. Is that really so? Is it not so that from the fact that in our Mishnah, the Seifa of our Mishnah um, had Rabbi Yossi, uh, Rabbi Lezer Omer, the Mekoymoi Hoya Omeid. And uh, by the way, if you need to find where this is a quote from, you can use the arrow to the uh, immediate right-hand side of the Gemara text, and you can see that it points back to the upper part of Nun uh, Ches Omid Beis, fourth line of the Mishnah, where Rabbi Lezer said that he stands in his spot. In other words, Rabbi Lezer clearly is of the opinion Hakofa Biyad. Miflal, that would infer from this you can infer the Tanakama lo Sfira lay. <coughs> the Tanakama, the first opinion, doesn't agree with that. It's only Rabbi Lezer that's saying he stands in place and moves around with his arm. He doesn't walk around. The Tanakama doesn't agree with that. And who is the Tanakama? We pointed this out earlier. The Tanakama is Rabbi Yossi Haglili. And how do I know that the Tanakama is Rabbi Yossi Haglili? Because in the Mishnah, we saw the beginning of uh, the, the beginning was Mizrachis Sfonis, who said Mizrachis Sfonis at the beginning point. That was Rabbi Yossi Haglili. So uh, to say that everyone, meaning Rabbi Kiva and Rabbi Yossi Glili, hold Hakofa Biyad, that is not reasonable. Rabbi Yossi Glili hold Hakofa Beregel. Elo machvarto kedeshanino meikora. Machvarto means it's more likely, literally it's cleaner, it's whiter, it's better to explain as we did earlier. Meikora means at the beginning, more so v'hakofa biyad. Rabbi Kiva holds the, uh, in the machlokas between Rabbi Kiva and Rabbi Yosei Rabbi Kiva takes the position of hakofa biyad, the arm movement around the Mizbech, and umor sovar and Rabbi Yosei holds uh, and the following is the analysis of their machlekes. 
more sovar soviv de mizbeach pnimi ke soviv de mizbeach achitzon. Rabbi Yosef Lui says that when you go around, the word soviv appears in the psukim. The uh, Rashi quotes the posuk on in the narrow, the upper part of the narrow line. Soviv is not pnimi. Rashi says dechtiv be al karnos mizbeach soviv. So that soviv, which means around, uh, regarding the internal mizbeach, is learned from is was like the soviv of the mizbeach achitzon. Now the mizbeach achitzon was, of course, a very large structure. He would walk around that by foot. So Rabbi Yossi Aglimi, who has him walking around the mizbeach apinimi, that's because he walks around the mizbeach achitzon. Umor Sovar and Rabbi Akiva, who who holds that he doesn't walk around the mizbeach apinimi, and that's because the kule mizbeach pnimi the mokim chado keren the mizbeach chitzon koi. This small mizbeach apnimi was in fact the same uh, size by as far as uh, length width dimensions as one corner of the external mizbeach. And the in the, in the external mizbeach, the courtyard mizbeach had four blocks. Uh, cubes at the top of it, and each one measured an amo by an amo, the same dimensions as the entire length width of the internal mizbeach. So it's uh, it's uh, the machlokus between Rabbi Yosef Glili and Rabbi Kiva, where Rabbi Yosef Glili says hakofa beregel, because the concept of soviv that you see by the mizbeach mimi is derived from the concept of soviv that you find by the Mizbech HaChitzon, which was Hakofa Bregu. You had to walk around it. Rabbi Kiva doesn't see that comparison, but rather he looks at the dimensions of the Mizbech HaPnimi being no greater than one corner, one corner of the external Mizbech. And for, there was the, the idea of walking around one corner doesn't exist. You walk around the entire external Mizbech, but the uh, but the internal zbech, as as it was, and it measured only one amo by an amo, one amo was the, was the equivalent of a single corner of the courtyard zbech. Hence, no need for walking around that internal uh, golden altar that stood in the hechal. The Gemara continues. Tanya, we have a, a very interesting uh, Tanaic source. Omar Rebbe Ishmael Snakely Hanem Gedolim Nishtairu Bamikdash. It seems that this is a source uh, ref, uh, alluding to a time after the destruction of the second Beis Hamikdash. So we're two Kehanim Gedolim that that lived at that time. Zeoimer Biyadi Hakafti. One testifies that I did the uh, golden altar blood applications by my by an arm surra- uh, movement around the Mizbech and the other Kohen double testifies I walked around it and each one gave an explanation for his testimony uh, just like the analysis we saw a moment ago Rabbi Yossi Aglili's, uh, the analysis given for Rabbi Yossi Aglili, that we derive the uh, concept of Soviv that you see written in the context of the internal Golden Mizbech blood applications from the Soviv that took place, the going around the external courtyard Mizbech, which was a surrounding or walking around by foot. The Zeno Saint Hamlet Vorov and the Kohen Godel that said I was Makif Biyad explains. Kule Mizbeach Nimi, the entire golden internal altar, the Mokom Chado Keren de Chitzon Koit, occupied the same amount of space as one corner of the courtyard external Mizbeach. Uh, before we conclude, let us remind you that if you wish to be in touch with us, we can be reached at gmarkings at gmail.com. With that, we conclude our shiur for today.